So I've been leading businesses uh, across various industries, largely here in the Chicago area now for well over 30 years. And I've learned a few things, I guess, which is, first of all, articulating my values, building teams who are aligned with those values and bringing them to life in our business and communities, we can also drive superior business results at the same time. And it sounds simple, but too often, I think we get off track. And my message to all of you as business leaders is this, lead through your values. Insist on teams who bring those values to life and take the long view even when it's tough. So a few themes have guided me. The first I would say, and Melody talked about this a little bit, it's really about understanding your consumer, your customer, your guests as we call them. Understand them better than anybody else. Understand them empathetically, meaningfully, and let those insights drive all of your actions. Second, treat your employees, your partners, your associates as we call them, with the respect they deserve. They know better than anybody else what's working and what's not working. And it's their engagement that drives the engagement of your guests and drives your business results. And the third I would say is I just say keep it real. You know, humility, humanity, authenticity, it doesn't have to change the further up you go. In fact, I believe on this one, more is more. It's interesting, beauty's been around for a long time. It's gonna continue to be around for a long time. Cosmetics has actually played a role in humankind back at least as far as 6,000 years in every society in the world, often both for women and men. In ancient Egypt, cosmetics were used to protect the skin. Eye makeup in particular was used to ward off evil spirits. And dark coal was a very practical thing. Black coal was used to deflect sunlight, which you still see today, right? In baseball and football, it's kind of cool. Think about the images that you've seen of Cleopatra. You gotta dig this lady. She truly made the smoky eye and winged eyeliner a thing. <laughs> and they're both trendy again in 2017, so you go, girl. So we're in an industry that I believe will always be very important in people's lives, and it's getting more dynamic today, right, in the increasingly multicultural world and country that we live in, the fluidity of gender definition, the importance of social media, the explosion of beauty bloggers, and the fact that more photos are taken today than ever in human history, and I don't think we're gonna go backwards on that one. Now I'm proud that Ulta Beauty, I believe, understands our guests better than anybody else in the industry. And we're driving industry growth through a successful business model, delivering in-store and online experiences that are really in line with how our guests wanna shop. But I'm also proud about a few other things. So opportunity, first of all, we have 35,000 now employees. We're growing very fast. And we have over 1,000 stores. We're growing rapidly with plans to build 100 stores a year for the foreseeable future. Now here's a cool thing, 92% of our associates are women. And we're creating 2,500 new jobs every year. We have more work to do to truly represent the diversity of our country, but I'm proud of what we've done. The second thing I'm really proud about is culture. I place an incredible amount of effort and importance on shaping culture. At this stage of my career, at this stage of my life, and at this stage of Ulta Beauty, I really believe that a guest-centric, values-based, and high-performance culture, and that's what we've built, is really driving our success today. It starts at the top with me and my leadership team, and it comes to life every day through the interactions that our associates have with our guests in our stores and the environment that we create for them. So we measure associate engagement quantitatively, as I'm sure many of you do as well, and I'm really proud about the fact that Ulta Beauty right now is in the top quartile of all companies across industries globally in engagement, and the top 10% of all retail. Retail offers millions of jobs across our country in giving people the opportunity to build a career in life with only a high school degree. So in the last four years at Ulta Beauty, we've created more than 16,000 jobs, We've had 18,000 people promoted, most of those women, of course, at our company. So for me, the bottom line is that, you know, I think our ongoing privilege and responsibility is about creating jobs and creating an environment that's inclusive for all associates and all guests, regardless of race, religion, gender identity or expression or any other characteristic. Your company has 92% women employees. Mm -hmm. Obviously very rare. And so I wonder, when you think about corporate America and the issues that are confronting women, especially in leadership positions, 
from your vantage point, where you have a lot of women leaders, especially at senior levels, what do you think these companies are getting wrong or are missing? What is not happening? Right. Well, you know, inherently beauty, I mean, so many of our associates are working our, in our stores. But even and, at the senior level, you Right, know. right. And I, but I was going to say, so we have an advantage in that way. At the senior level, yeah, half of my leadership team are women in key roles, like our CTO is here, our general counsel is here, our head of stores. Um, our board, we were recognized recently as having the most gender diverse board, one of the most gender diverse in the country, and certainly in Illinois with 50% women. So I'm proud about that. So, I mean, it takes sort of, I guess, at the beginning, just an orientation towards diversity as a non-starter. It's like you just have to look for talent. You have to make it a, tor a top priority at the very top of the company. It's easier said than done, than done, though, right? So I think part of it is making it top of mind, making it a priority, and developing the talent. So do you so think people think that it comes naturally for you because you're a woman, and so therefore you hire women? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's funny because we also had a moment where I realized I had to make sure that the men in our company felt that they could progress as well. I mean, seriously, I had a thing happen once. We had a meeting and we had somebody talking about how great we were doing and she had only met only women on my team. And she said, well, now I know why this company's doing so well. You run all by women. And I was like, well, first of all, it's not exactly true, but, you know, thank you. I mean, whatever. And then I realized that there were men in the audience who worked for us who were kind of like, a little hurt by that, I guess. So part of me had to take a moment to go, well, it's an interesting lesson for all of us, because that's how many of us have felt when you looked up and you saw only men. But I also said to myself, you know, I am not, after working this hard in my career, I'm not going to run a company where anybody feels excluded. And I'm going to make sure that we don't send that kind of signal either. So, but I would say when I go back to other parts of my career, it took people at the top, most often it was men, who decided to make it a priority to put women in operating jobs, to create flexibility when needed, to give them exposure and leadership development programs, and to build that pipeline. Peace on gender fluidity, and this is just one of the coolest things, is like men wearing makeup, straight men, gay men, doesn't matter. It's not that unusual anymore. And, you, and I love the fact that you can go into any of our stores anywhere and see all sorts, you can be whoever you want to be, is what I would say. Now, do and you so think that's I don't really think it's mainstream. Fortune 500 company. What do you mean? Then you'd go in a boardroom and see a man wearing makeup. Well, it wouldn't be necessarily super obvious, but uh, just yesterday I had a woman telling me that she taught her husband how to use a little bit of a brow gel to make his brows less gray. And he at first thought, no way, and then she showed him. He's like, okay. So it may be subtle enough that we don't know, Melody. We don't know. There might be brow gel out there. Are you scared of Amazon? <laughs> That's a segue. <laughs> Amazon. I'm not scared of anything. Um, no, I'm kidding. What I'd say about Amazon is Amazon has changed everybody's expectations about speed and convenience in life, right? And that's only going to continue to, to happen. Now, the beauty industry, it's a little interesting. What, the hard part is that most of the people that invest in us, with all due respect, are you know, men on Wall Street who aren't our consumer target. And so a lot of times people don't understand really that really, truly, truly, there's a big segment of shoppers. It's 57% of shoppers that are this beauty enthusiast. They love to shop in person and online. And that experience in store plus our services, that's never going to go away. But what scares me a little is that there's a herd mentality about everything's about Amazon. So when Amazon, bought, when they bought Whole Foods and you know, Nike, so there's a lot of stuff happening there that's, that's shifting the narrative about retail. But those of us who know retail know that people are going to be shopping in stores and online for many years to come. And our job is to play offense. So and make the experience are, better every day. There's been some obvious real effect. Mm -hmm. So every day we open up the paper, we see doors closed yes. to retailers. We mm -hmm. just saw Sears Canada right. is declaring bank bankruptcy. There have been a lot of companies, yeah. obviously. What is it, if you look at just traditional department stores or some of the traditional mm -hmm. retailers, what do you think they have to do to make sure they can survive and thrive in this next um, iteration right. of retail. Yeah, and, and for sure, it's not like there's no effect. I'd say a couple things. One is department stores, people have been shifting away from department stores for a long period of time, not only because of online shopping. They've been shifting more to things like where we're set up in specialty, smaller formats. 
And so fortunately for us, our real estate tends to be off mall. So that is less about online, but it's more about I don't want to go park in this big, huge parking lot and find, right? So that's one thing. The second is that it depends on the category. So depending on, you know, certain categories are much easier to just replenish online. Other things we want to shop for in person. But at the end of the day, I know everybody in retail, and I think we're on, I know we're on this. We've really got this, we, but we have to keep working at it. It has to be you have to have an experience that people want that's somewhat exclusive, that's fun and engaging, that has a human physical component to it, and you have to be great online. You have to be a multi-channel operator, but to exist as a bricks and mortar you know, retailer, you have to have a reason for people to come and shop.